We thank you for the presence of the Holy Spirit inside us and among us, your people. We thank you for your favor. All powerfully touch your people, heal your people, deliver your people this afternoon. We give you praise and we give you glory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Let's give the Lord a mighty hand clap of praise. Thank you, worship. Let's take our seats. We thank God for that such a wonderful time of worship. I want to welcome everybody that has joined us from uh, within Nairobi, Kenya, Uganda, African countries that are online and uh, those that are watching us from Asia, America, Europe, Latino America, and Australia. Uh, I want to thank all of you for making a decision to join us and to be part of what the Lord is doing through this uh, telecast. Uh, before I get to the Word of God, I want to thank all of you that joined yesterday to pray for the United States. It was very, very, very powerful. And uh, I think our prayers are working. I managed to watch something today. I think President Trump was in, Pen was it Pennsylvania yesterday? And uh, it is said he had a very wonderful rally. Uh, he's not had that kind of rally, I think, for the last six months. That's what uh, CNN was saying. So I believe that our prayers are already having impact. You had so many people attending. Thank you for standing in the gap for the United States of America. So uh, today, we are, this is a healing, a prophetic healing service. And uh, we're going to be ministering to the people that are sick. And you can also stand in the gap for for your relative or somebody because there's no distance in the realm of the spirit. But before I do that, I want to read some two testimonies here. This is from Victoria. She says, at the beginning of August during lunchtime service, Apostle Subi, you say that at the end of August, God is going to do a great thing with employment that we should wait and see another week he prayed for God's favor to be on us, and it hit me in my spirit. He said that those that would normally be shut would be open because of God's favor. I work in property law, and the market has been unstable due to COVID, and many firms are not hiring because no one knows what is going to happen if there will be a recession or not. But I applied for a new position on Wednesday last week, by the following day, they wanted to have a phone interview with me before calling me to the office for a face-to-face -face interview. But after my phone interview, they sent the offer letter. Not only that, the pay is 20% more than my previous job. It's also, it also allows me to work apart from home and apart from the office exactly what I was looking for. The agent also remarked that he had never seen anyone hired so quickly. I don't know what to say. Indeed, we are in a season of open doors and open gates. Glory to God. We celebrate that a powerful miracle that has taken place in your life. Uh, Victoria, yeah. Then I have another one here that I just... Uh, uh, Pastor Yunis sent it to me this up just now. It says that, uh, greetings in the name of our Lord. My name is Esther. I would like to testify of my healing. I have been having pains in my left breast since 2016. It could get so bad I sometimes could, couldn't lift my hands to worship in church. I have gone to hospital but they couldn't find anything. 
On Monday, in my morning prayers, I began to listen and sing along the song you were singing in thanks, the one you gave an interpretation that it meant I am the resurrection and life. As I was singing it, the power of God came upon my breast. I believe I am, I, I, I am made whole. I can now sleep on my back comfortably. At the same time, she got to miracles at the same time, God healed me of urinary tract infection that wasn't going away even after medication. I can't help but shed tears as I type this. God is so good, I'm forever grateful. I believe this affliction shall never rise again in my family. In Jesus' mighty name. And uh, we believe with you, according to Nahum, Prophet Nahum, chapter 1 and verse 9, that says that affliction shall not rise up the second time. Wow. You know, that song that we sang on Sunday, and I told the, the, the media people, you need, to, you need to, to record that, you need to uh, set that song apart. I've never, God usually gives me songs, uh, songs of the Spirit, and we, we sing so much in tongues, um, you know, when we are ministering in this ministry. But that was such an unusual, very powerful, even when I was, I was receiving that song, I just felt the surge of power going through my spirit. I don't know if Pastor Patrick, you remember the song, but that is a song that we will need to, uh, to, I mean, we need to record all these spiritual songs that the Lord has been giving us uh, because there's so much power and so much anointing. So media team, we're going to produce a CD of just those spiritual songs uh, because that, that was so powerful. And you know, as she was listening to it, the power of God came upon her life and um, she just got healed from such a sickness that has afflicted her ever since uh, 2016. Okay, so I'm going to share the word of God. I have uh, quite a number of uh, dreams here that I'm going to be interpreting, but I'll be dealing with that after sharing the word of God and uh, praying with the people. Okay, so we've been looking at uh, healing and uh, we've, uh, you know, realized from the scriptures that it's not the will of God for, for you to be sick, you know. Uh, there are not many people in the scripture that fell sick and, they, and, and the Lord did not heal them. Uh, you remember the man that we were talking about the man that came to Jesus and he had leprosy. And Jesus, he, you know, he asked Jesus, if you will, can you heal me? And Jesus, you know, immediately healed him, you know. So, uh, the, today, we are going to be continuing to look at that. And we are going to look at why did Jesus Christ heal the sick? Why did the Lord heal the sick? People of God, the Lord wants you to not to die of sickness. Because you see, the last stage of sickness is what? Is physical death. Yeah. You know, if you fall sick and that sickness is not, you don't get healed, the next dimension from sickness is death. Unfortunately, many people have been, have left this world through the, the way of sickness. And I'm declaring it over your life that even when your days to be taken to glory come, you're not going to go through sickness. You will go because of feebleness. You know, your time has come for you to go home. No sickness. Can you declare that with me? I will never die of sickness. I'm not going to die of sickness. 
I am exiting because my time has come, but not through sickness. Because that is not the will of God. Abraham never died of sickness. Jacob was not sickness. It was just that he was feeble. Isaac, it was not sickness. You know, there is only one prophet recorded that died of sickness, and that was Elisha. So, point number one, why did Jesus perform miracles of healing? To fulfill his prophetic ministry. Matthew chapter 8, verse 16 to 17. When the even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word, and healed all that were sick, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Esaias, the prophet saying, himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. So we know very well that from the scriptures in Isaiah chapter 58 that there was a prophetic word that had been spoken about the Messiah. And what was that prophetic word? The prophetic word was that when the Messiah comes, he was going to take all our infirmities. And I explained to you yesterday and I said that before Messiah came, there were certain sicknesses that could not be healed. They could not be healed. All these sicknesses were waiting for the coming of the Messiah. We looked at leprosy. We looked at uh, deaf ears. We looked at the mute. We looked at blind eyes. And the other one was, of course, resurrecting somebody who had died after three days. That was waiting for the Messiah. And when the Messiah came, he met the expectations of the people that were waiting for him because he did all those, uh, mess, what we've come to call as the messianic miracles. Because when God speaks the word, his word doesn't go back to him until it has fulfilled what he has assigned it for. And so what we are saying that because Messiah has already come for the last 2,000 years, he's been available every kind of sickness and every kind of infirmity he paid a price for it remember he was beaten 39 stripes and according to jewish tradition there are 39 sicknesses in the book of the covenant and he took care of that the kind of pain that jesus christ went through was unbearable as the romans beat him with those roads that had they either had bones or they had metals you know and every time they they they, they, they beat him uh blood oozed out of his entire body to the point that isaiah said that when we looked at him we could not recognize him because his entire face was mud it was full of blood you know, it is unacceptable in spiritual dynamics for the price to be paid twice. The price is paid once. Jesus paid the price so that you and me should not live in affliction. He came to fulfill, uh, he had to heal people in order to fulfill the prophetic words that were spoken over his life. And child of God, I want you to know that it is easier to be healed today more than it was in the days of the Holy Testament. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is already resident inside of your life. And we look at that scripture in Romans chapter 8 and verse 11 that says that if the Spirit that raised the Christ to be in you is going to quicken your mortal bodies. And this afternoon, I am praying for you, even as you're watching me, the Holy Ghost that is in you and the Holy Spirit that is in me and the Holy Spirit that is in the atmosphere is quickening your eyes, quickening your ears, quickening your, da your, your damn mouth and everything. You are going to be healed and you're getting healed in the mighty name of Jesus. Point number two, why did Jesus heal the sick? He healed the sick to express his compassion. Matthew chapter 14 and verse 14. 
And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with the compassion towards them, and he healed their sick. You know? You know, there is a, there is a difference between compassion and sympathy. I can sympathize with you, but do nothing for you. You know? I can sympathize with you, but do nothing for you. Every time the Lord becomes compassionate, and that's why when we spend time with God in prayer, one of the things that the Spirit of the Lord imparts upon us is compassion. Compassion for His people. When compassion for God's people comes upon you, you're willing to pay the price that is needed for, for a move of God to take place. We need a move of God to take place. Jesus Christ was compassionate. He had the compassion, you know. And uh, uh, the, 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 the thing about compassion is this. Every time that there is compassion, compassion leads to a move of God. Compassion will lead to a solution, you know. When somebody has compassion, they will be propelled to act to bring a solution to that. So, he, you cannot say, I have compassion, I have compassion, I have compassion, and you are doing absolutely nothing. No, 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 no. Compassion is always followed by action. So, Jesus Christ uh, had to do that to express his compassion. Thirdly, to convey the mercy of God. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 27. For indeed he was sick nigh unto death, but God had mercy on him, and not on him only, but on me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. <laughs> you know, the ministry of Paul was a ministry that really had a lot of challenges with sicknesses, you know. Uh, I, 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 just, I, I just don't understand why Paul's ministry, because Paul had uh, a thorn in the flesh. His spiritual son, Timothy, had problems with his stomach. You know, yeah, you remember in one of the letters, Paul is encouraging Timothy to take some wine, you know, uh, for the purposes of his stomach. And then there was another brother, he was called who? Uh, was it Trophesinus or something like that? A very complicated name. Uh, you, in Second Timothy, I think chapter 4, uh, there's another brother that was his companion. Uh, he also was terribly sick. But the thing is this, uh, Jesus Christ performed the miracles. And, you know, Paul is saying here that uh, 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 God had mercy. And I think he was speaking, of, let me look at, um, uh, he was speaking about this particular brother who was sick. So God had mercy over him. I mean, uh, the, the Lord says that I'm going to show you the unfailing mercies of David. You know? So this afternoon, uh, may the Lord release his mercies upon your life. May the Lord look at you and your children with mercy so that he can release his healing upon your life and upon your beloved ones. And listen, child of God, uh, healing is not something that, that the Lord is struggling with. It is just like that. And that is lifted, just like what we heard from our sister. Nobody was there to pray for her. She was just listening to the music and God had mercy over her. We are healed not because our prayers are so powerful, but basically because of the mercies of God. You know, it is because of mercy. And his mercies do not fail. His mercies are new every morning. This is what uh, 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 Bartimaeus had a revelation of God's mercy. You know, when he heard that Jesus Christ was passing around and began to shout, and what, what, what was his prayer? Son of David, son of David, son of David, have mercy on me. You know, I may not be worthy to be healed, I may not be a worshiper. I may not be connected to you. And you know, I've seen so much that God heals so much non-believers get healed. I, I remember, I will never, I mean, mercy, people of God, mercy and grace. You know, faith, 
Faith is a powerful spiritual law. That's why Jesus kept on telling people, have faith in God, have faith in God, have faith in God. Faith is a powerful spiritual law, but I've come to realize that grace is a higher spiritual law. Because for you to be healed by faith, it means that you should have faith. You should believe. You should have faith. But when grace and mercy comes in, even when you don't believe, you get healed. <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, spiritual laws, spiritual laws, I mean, uh, you know, God has been teaching us this year about the laws of the Spirit. And we are learning, we are on a journey of learning because the Lord spoke to me to constitute an understanding how the spiritual realm works. We are on a journey of learning. I, I just realized that faith is a powerful spiritual law but the law of grace and the law of mercy does not need your faith. God will just do it because he has mercy on you. And that's what, that's what uh, uh, Bartimaeus was, was, was calling and people were telling him, shut up! And he continued crying and saying, son of David, Zagadoza, have mercy on me today. I don't qualify. I'm not a prayer warrior. I have not fasted for 40 days. I have not served you the way the apostles have done. All I need is your mercy. I am a sinner, but I need your mercy. Because when it comes to your mercy and to your grace, you don't consider whether I am a sinner or not. It is just by grace. It's not just by mercy. It's got nothing to do with me. It's got nothing to do with my faith. It all depends on your mercy. Because you are God and you do what you want to do and you are not accountable to anybody. You do what you want to do. You are Jehovah. You are self-existent. You've been there from the... You don't need to consult from anybody. Somebody lift your hand as you're watching and just say, Lord, have mercy. Have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy on me today. Son of David, have mercy on me today. Have mercy on me today. I cry out for mercy. Mercy. I cry out for mercy. Show me the unfailing mercies of David. Shamagados. All we need is mercy. Listen, I was in Hong Kong. I will never forget. I was having a healing service. And so I prayed for people. God did, did, did a lot of miracles. A lot of deliverances and healings. Then, a friend of mine, she's a lawyer. She brought me her friend, an Italian lady. I will never forget that lady. She was brought and... Uh, so my, my, my friend told her, this is my friend, Pastor Subi from Kenya. You know, he's, um, he's been praying for people and go, uh, God has been healing them and so on. So I brought you so that he can pray for you because you've been so sick. She had a problem. Her stomach was always bloated. She could not, every time she ate food, she vomited because she had a condition. Uh, and it, is, it had been there for years. She had gone to, I mean, th this was a wealthy you know, family. She had gone to the best doctors, not only in Hong Kong, but in other countries, and they could do nothing about it. So I told the, the lady, the Jesus that I serve, I don't have any power personally, but the Jesus that I serve, he, if you believe, he has power to heal you. And she told me, I don't believe. <laughs> I told her, come on, you just need to believe that the Jesus I explained to her is the son of God. And she said, so be. She was calling me by my name. <laughs> I don't believe. I say, now, Lord, where do I begin? So, anyway, then I just told her, okay, whether you believe or you don't believe, let me pray for you. God usually has mercy. Her stomach was bloated. I prayed for her, 
and God healed her immediately. The stomach sank. And can you imagine? She was shocked. She said, wow! She went and ate. From that day, she never vomited. But do you know, she said, I still don't believe in God. God your God has healed me. <laughs> I've never met such a lady. You know, your God has healed me, uh, but I don't believe there is a God. Maybe it is your mind which is so strong. I try to explain to her. What am I saying? People of God, faith is so powerful, but mercy and grace, they are more powerful. Where there is mercy, where there is grace, it doesn't depend on my faith, it doesn't depend on me, it is all about God. And uh, this afternoon, you know, somebody, you came on this uh, online and you say, you know, because you've been prayed for for so long, and you're saying, I don't have faith, I don't believe. Son of God, God is healing you. God is healing you. It is his mercy. I see the eyes of Jesus. He's smiling over you. He's healing you. It's got nothing, let me tell you, it's got nothing to do with you. It's got nothing to do with me. It's God's mercy that is coming to you this afternoon. In the mighty name of Jesus. Shabagados. Point number four. Why did Jesus heal the sick? To prove that God had truly sent him. To prove that God had truly sent him. Look at Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. Okay, let's read first of all Acts chapter 2 and verse 22. You men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, my God, I love this. This is too sweet. A man approved of God among you. By what? <laughs> not just by words. God did not approve. You know, it's easier for somebody to come and say, God has sent me. God is with me. God is with me. God has sent me. No. Jesus Christ, and that is the pattern. It is the pattern that God uses to approve every child of God. A man approved among you by miracles and wonders and signs. Hmm. Miracles, signs and wonders is like God's signature to show that he has approved of you. Are we together? So, Jesus Christ healed the sick. The Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit was with him. And he healed the sick. He moved in so many miracles. Some of the things that he did were just wonders. They were not even miracles. How do you walk on water? That is not a miracle. That's not a miracle. You know, he challenged the laws of gravity you know he walked on water that was a wonder in the book of john chapter 9 he meets this man who was totally born uh, totally there, there, there was even no place for eyes and he makes some soil there he entered into the spiritual space of creativity you know and he created the eyes using soil like it was in Genesis because Adam came from soil. That was not a miracle. That was a wonder. Child of God, when the favor of God is upon your life, God will approve you. He will approve you. 
not by mere words, but he will approve you with miracles, signs, and wonders. May the Lord approve your ministry. May the Lord approve your ministry. May the Lord approve your life. May miracles, signs, and wonders accompany you. There must be some supernatural happenings taking place in your life for people to know that surely God is with this person. You know, at times we, we want a man to approve us. But child of God, there is a greater approval. There is a greater approval. You know, I am forever, forever grateful. I am forever grateful to the power of the Holy Spirit. Because at times, God has sent me to cities. He has sent me to nations where I knew nobody. I totally knew nobody. I had no relationship with anybody there. I didn't have enough money on me and I entered into a city but the Holy Spirit was with me. And the Holy Spirit approved the fact that he had sent me by doing miracles among us to God's people. That was the approach that Smith Wigglesworth used. Smith Wigglesworth lived in a, in a time when there was no internet. You know, you, you see nowadays uh, when you travel to go and preach in the United States, uh, people are going to, you know, search about you. They're going to read about you. They're going to... Smith because was not like that. He entered into places where he was totally not known. And he could begin his meetings with a few people. Maybe ten people. And then he continues. My goodness. And blind eyes begin to open. Deaf ears begin to open. And the meetings just keep on growing into thousands. People of God, you need to operate in the supernatural. And we're not, when we're talking about miracles, we're not just talking about the miracles of healing, but we're also talking about financial miracles. We're talking about supernatural interventions. I mean, you know, uh, opening up your mind, your understanding, the understanding of your children and so on. Look at this. In, uh, okay, point number, point number what? Point number five. Which God did by him in the midst of you, oh my God. What a scripture. I mean, the Holy Spirit, <laughs> the Holy Spirit really knows how, you know, Jesus was approved by miracles and wonders and signs. Which God did by him in the midst of you. These miracles were not done in secret that he was talking about something that people had not seen. People were there. They witnessed. They gave records. We saw this man come in blind and he left here saying, we were there at the, at the grave of Lazarus. We attended his burial. And on the fourth day, Jesus came. And it, you know, there's nothing as beautiful as the Lord doing miracles amongst the people that you know. Point number five. Why did Jesus Christ perform miracles? To destroy the works of the devil. First John chapter 3 and verse 8. He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. People of God, what are the works of the devil? Sicknesses is one of the major, major works of the devil. Remember that before the fall, Genesis 1 and Genesis 2, there was no sickness. Adam and Eve 
they lived in a spiritual space in the Garden of Eden. The Garden of Eden means the place where the presence of God is. There was no sickness, there was no cancer, no diabetes, no high blood pressure, no nothing. They lived a healthy life. And you know what? Adam was not a spiritual being. Because the Bible says in Genesis chapter 2 that when God breathed into Adam, Adam became a living soul, not a living spirit. The second Adam, who is Jesus Christ, became a quickening spirit. Which means that we people that are living in the New Testament church, especially after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, operate in a higher spiritual space than Adam because the second Adam was greater. And because he was greater, he was the first fruit of those that resurrected from the dead never to die again. We operate on a higher dimension. Sickness was not there. Generational curses were not there. Iniquities were not there and transgressions. All these things were brought about by the devil beginning in Genesis chapter 3. The reason why Jesus came, he came to destroy the works of the devil. Because no man had ever received such authority and such power. All men that had lived before, they could not have authority and power to destroy the works of the devil totally because they all had sin. And God had to arrange that his son was born without sin, without iniquity, without transgression because that was the vehicle that the enemy has always used to bring about sicknesses in people's lives. And Jesus destroyed, totally destroyed the works of the devil. And where did he do that? He did it on the cross. When those nails were going through him, that's where he, he, he stripped principalities and powers of darkness. It was a shameful death. And yet, the power of the cross is what shook the gates of hell. You know. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So, Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Jesus was not only anointed with the Holy Spirit. All of us have the Holy Ghost. As long as you are born again, you received the Holy Spirit in the regenerational process of your spirit because without the Holy Spirit, there is no regeneration. It's another thing to have the Holy Ghost, but it's another thing to have power. Jesus Christ was given both. The Holy Ghost came upon him when he came out of the river Jordan, but when he went to the wilderness and prayed and fasted and he was there with the beasts, he received power. And the power was given for a purpose. God is intentional when he does something. He doesn't give us power so that we can just feel good and say, my goodness, the power is going through me. Power is to function. The anointing is to enable you to function, to destroy the works of the devil. And look at what the scripture goes on to say. It says, uh, he went about doing good by reason of the power and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him healing all that were oppressed of the devil meaning what that all sicknesses are brought about by the devil God does not bring sickness actually even when I, of course God can allow I explained that at the beginning when I was sharing why do Christians fall sick God can allow a sickness to come but how does he do that he removes away his protection to use it to chastise his children so that they can return back to him. But once you have repented of your sin, the sickness has to go. You cannot go through chastising forever. 
you know. But this scripture, Acts 10, 38, is explaining to us that it is the devil that brought the sicknesses. Child of God, the, 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 the doctors and the scientists may call it cancer, they may call it HIV, they may call it diabetes, they may call it leukemia and whatever they call it, but behind every sickness there is a demon, there is a spirit, you know, that, that is afflicting your body. And this afternoon, standing in delegated authority with the Holy Spirit that is inside of you and that is inside of me and that is around you, we are commanding every sickness to lose your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Because the Son of Man has been manifested to destroy the works of the devil. And listen to me, I love my God so much because the devil works so hard to construct a sickness in your body, in your children. It could have taken years, but when God shows up in a twinkling of an eye, it disappears. What took the devil 10 years to establish in your breast, to establish in your ears, to establish in your mouth, that lamp in a twinkling of an eye, Mazula Bagadaya, it is disappearing in the name of Jesus. Diabetes is disappearing. High blood pressure is disappearing. All those are works of the devil. Mandeza Gadoza Bakatoza. Rema Kataya. The Bible says that on the seed of the woman, that was the first prophetic word that was given in the book of Genesis, chapter 3. And the seed of the woman shall crush the head of the serpent. We are here not to pray for you to get better. We are here to crush the head of cancer, to crush the head of diabetes, to crush the head of leukemia. That HIV must lose your body in the name of Jesus. That spirit of blindness that has been upon your eyes it must lose you in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God, because the price was paid. You cannot continue to afflict the children of God. That spinal cord, I speak to it to receive power. You spinal cord, receive power. Zaga, zaga. The spirit of weakness that was in your legs and you could not walk. I command that spirit, come out in the name of Jesus. I command that spirit of weakness from your waist to your legs. Devil, I adore you by the finger of God. I command you right now. Loose that woman, loose that man, loose their legs, loose their eyes, loose their ears, loose their chest, loose their stomach, loose their head. COVID 19 out right now. Sama Kabo Seke Teda, Mando Sama Gadaya, He Kabo Seke Brekataya, Manda Sama Gadaya, He Masande Akataya. He said, I give you power. I give you power. I give you power. Not physical power, but supernatural power. I give you power to crush the powers of darkness. I give you power. Zagadaya, Mando Shamakataya, Remayanderebe, Rekasakataya. That infirmity is breaking right now. It's breaking right now. I command the infirmity over your right hand. Come out. Samayander of the Sandaya. Rema Kabo Seketea. Asthma, come out. Diabetes, come out. High blood pressure, come out. Cancer, come out. Your lump of cancer, come out now. Makasaka Yabadara. Wow, the anointing is moving. The Holy Spirit is moving. The power of God is moving. Healing is moving over your life. The fire of God is falling over your life. In the name of Jesus, HIV is getting healed now. The next time you go for that test, you're gonna be HIV negative. 
because the Lord has done it. He has delivered you. You shall not die. You are living. Your blood has been changed in a twinkling of an eye. It has been switched from a child positive to a child negative. Oh my God. I release healing in your prostrate. Healing in your prostrate. Oh my God. Somebody's prostrate was so big. It is contracting right now. It's contracting right now. By the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Ah. Go Shabagadeza. Vandesa Magadea. Vayate Rebeyanda. Remandosa Magadaya. This is your healing hour. This is your healing hour. This is your healing day. This is your healing minute. Rosha Magadaya. Remakataya. Child of God. You have had bad pains. Stand up. Begin to practice now. Do it seven times. Do it seven times. Your back is healed. 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 Your back. Masatalabagadoza. Rekarabayataya. Rosatalabagadeza. Roseketerabayan. Mando Shamagadaya. Makayaba. The allergy of the nose is healed in the name of Jesus. Rosala Gadaya. Vanessa Makata. Somebody with the Brucella. Brucella. Brucella is leaving you. Maro Seketia. Vayama Gadesa. Re Kabozaya. Re Mandesa. Re Kabozeta. Vayama Gadosa. Liva Solaresa. Your liver is getting healed. Re Mando Samagadaya. Vakabo Sekundre Mataya. Makana Mayanda. I see somebody that is not stable. You are always shaking. You are always shaking. Oh, you have a relative like that. Oh my God, I don't, I don't even know what that sickness is called. But you cannot stand stably. The Lord is healing you right now. Oh, fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Those who are blind, place your hands over your eyes. Son of David is he healing your eyes. Is he healing your eyes. Is he healing your eyes. Yes. Yes. You that has been using glasses, remove those glasses. The fire is going through your eyes. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Mara Sabagadaya, Rosabagadeza, Remanese Ketea, Vaya Telebeandus, Vacabo Zataya, Mando Sanagare, Vacana Mayanda. I remove blindness, blindness out, blindness out, blindness out, blindness out, blindness go out, out. out. Deafness, come out. Samagadosa, Roshabagadesa. I command the spirit of deafness. Loose the people of God. 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 Fire. Masande Atea, Roshabagadesa. Bayatea, Rebaya. Yes, that's the fire. The fire in your ears. The fire in your ears. The spirit of stammering. Out, out, out. I break your power. 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 Mashallah, Magadosa. 
Rose Keteza, Bandesa Magarea, Rosa Magareza, Baya Cateza, Rose Terebe, Remano Sete. The Bible says, On that day, on that day, on that day, today is the day, on this day, the yoke is broken. The yoke is broken. And the burden is lifted from your shoulders. Rosh Magadeza, Banosa Megadia, Bayala, all the pains in your knees. Fire 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 in your chest. Fire in your stomach. Fire in your shoulders. Fire in your back. Fire in your head. Migrant headache out. Ramasanda Bagaraya. Vaya Karabayanus. Vaya Karabayanus. Vaya Karabayanus. Vaya Karabayanus. Vaya Karabayanus. Hey, people of God, we have crossed into something. We have crossed into something. We have crossed in the atmosphere of healing. All sicknesses of the blood out, out, out. Every sickness in the blood out, out. Hormonal imbalance. I break it. Oh my God. I rebuke. I rebuke fibroids. 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 Makana Bazanda. Rosha Talabagado. Maya Talabagade. Rosha Talabagado. Bandera the second Bekatai. Mando Samagada. Maro Samagade. Makabre Katosa. Rondola was Setesa. Baseke Bekatai. Mando Samagade. Bakabo Zanila, Bareke Terebezanda, Marosa Magado, Bakabo Zatila, Rendelo Besetea, Bayata La Magadaya, Bakabo Setele, Rendosa Magadaya, Bandosa Magadaya, Fibroids out, Fibroids out, Fibroids out, Masanda La Magadaya. I rebuke barrenness. Barrenness of break your mind. Rosa Katalabaga. Rosa Ketelebea. Rema Mama Mama Mama. Rosa Talabayandus. Rema Katalabayandi. Hari Katalabayandi. Rasa Katalabayandus. Rosa Ketelebeandi. Bayama Katalabayandi. Bakobo Sekete. The Holy Spirit is still moving. Those test buds are coming back to life. You lost your test buds. You had a blister over your thumb. I see the sword of the Spirit is carrying it out in the mighty name of Jesus. That's the power of God. The fire that you're feeling over your thumb is the power of God. You cannot lift your hands. Lift them up now. You heal. Those shoulders are healed. The heaviness that you had over your shoulders. Somebody's shoulders, you, there was such a heaviness. There was such a difficulty. It is broken by the power of the Holy Ghost. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you for the healings that have happened this afternoon. Just begin to thank the Lord. Thank him. Thank him seven times. Tell him, Lord, thank you. Thank you for healing me. Thank you for delivering me from that affliction. Thank you for delivering me from that asthma. Thank you for delivering me from epilepsy. 
Thank you for delivering me from blindness. I will no longer see shadows. I see now. Oh yes, I see the hand of the Lord is touching that gentleman again. Yes, you're having a second touch because you are seeing but you're not seeing clearly. It is happening right now. Makosa magadera. Rendo shama katosa. Baya talaba sendere. Rema kobo seke brekatai. Marosa makatosa magadisa. Bando shama katosa ondela. Baroko seke brekatai. Rema ndo shama kateza. Rema kobo seke brekatai. Rema ndo shama gadosa. Rose ketere bezandai. Rosha tarabayanda. Mako seketea. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Ramakaya, Romosenda, all demons of affliction, of pain. No more pain, no more weakness in your body. No more, more weakness in your knees, Son of God. Exercise. You can squat down. You can jump up. Oh, my God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Shama, mama, mama, he touched me, he touched me, and all the joy that floods my soul, something happened, and now I know he touched me. And made me own. He touched me. He touched me. And all the joy that floods my soul. Something happened. And I know He touched me And made me whole He touched me He touched me He touched me And oh, oh Jesus. 
also changing you totally. You have been shy. You are so shy, so timid, so fearful. The Lord is turning you around. He's giving you a spirit of boldness. In the mighty name of Jesus. Masaka Mazanda Rabagada Marusi Tiribi Andiribi Somebody's metabolism, I hear that. Your metabolism is being healed right now. It has been such a struggle. And even you can touch your stomach, you're feeling the fire. Your stomach is like it is turning. It's like turning. That the Lord is, is dealing with a metabolism process inside of your stomach. Right now in the name of Jesus. That's the power of the Holy Ghost. Marosh Mando samayandiri, shama rama kore mara mara mama. Holy Spirit, we love you. We love you, Holy Spirit. Shama rama sakara mayandaba. Aramaya no se tere ziataramatana. Somebody worship him in the spirit. Worship him in the spirit. Aramase. Somebody, you went for an operation around your stomach and there is that that place of the where the scar is that you've been having a lot of pains in that area and you are getting worried whether you need to go back for another operation uh, the Lord is just removing away that is healing you right now in the mighty name of Jesus that place where you were operated the person who had the hormonal imbalances the Lord has done it for you in the mighty name of Jesus Marosha Ravagandos Marosha Ravagandos memory loss the Lord is restoring your memory we are losing your memory the Lord is restoring it right now have been struggling a lot with having quality sleep the Lord is doing it right now you're receiving the power to sleep just sing that song you've done so much for me
I cannot tell it all we say. If I had ten thousand times, still could be enough. We say, Chukuna kwama wele. When you hear, you hear completely. Be more, you see, you can do late. We say, What shall I render? to Jehovah? For he has done, oh, he has done so very much for me. What shall I render?
Amen and amen and amen and amen. God has done it for you. Amen. And we celebrate the Lord for that. Sickness is not your possible. You will never be sick again. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. I, I want us to give our offerings right now. Father, Lord, you know, it's good for you to sow a seed and thank the Lord for what he has done in your life. The Lord is our healer. Faith says it is already done. And by his mercies and by his grace, he has done it in our lives. So let us give an offering to the Lord as we honor him for what he has done in our lives today. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. Father, we thank you for blessing us and for touching our, our lives in such an amazing, powerful way. Thank you for the healings and the deliverances. Bless your people even as they give their offerings. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen and amen. Okay, right now I want to uh, do uh, some, um, you know, interpretation of dreams uh, you know, uh, uh, please, uh, on Sunday, I want to make this ad uh, an, um, announcement that on Sunday, we are going to be coming to you at 11 o'clock. It's going to be a very powerful service. And please, I also want to request you to, to do what? To share our page uh, with, uh, with people, you know. Uh, share the message. Just imagine that sister... That God healed, she was not, she didn't even listen to it on Sunday. But on Monday when she was praying, then she decided to tune on and she got healed through that. Because you see, these messages are recorded and that's why you should subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, because they are there on YouTube. And the power and the anointing and the presence of God remains on, uh, on those messages. And the Lord will greatly, greatly bless you. But I want you to share with others. That is also evangelism, by the way. It is evangelism to invite others, share with them, to like the page, and so on. You're doing evangelism. Don't watch alone. Uh, you know, we didn't know that we would be in such a situation like this. But God has given us a platform online. We can connect with people uh, all over Africa, Asia, America, Australia, Europe just online we are here it's lunch time here i i know that in malaysia it must be maybe eight uh in, in america it must be morning <laughs> but we are hearing the same message though we are in the different time zones and we are being affected by the power of god so uh god has done so much for us share invite others and it will be such a great blessing okay i want to look at a few uh dreams here and then um uh, and you know why I love to share your dreams when you send them to me. Some of you send to me dreams on the phone. Why? Because in such an atmosphere, it is not just a matter of sharing, giving you the interpretation of the dream, but also praying, you know, and breaking those things that God has revealed in the dream that could be hindering you from uh, stepping into your destiny. Now, somebody here called um, something... A uh, sister or brother, I don't know, Kag, says that um, in uh, Praise the Lord Apostle, I had a dream that needed your interpretation. In the dream I had come, I ca had come from prayers. I opened my eyes, a fat man was seated on my sofa with no shirt on. I asked him, he, him who he was and he didn't reply. He looked like an uncle that had died when I was a toddler. The dream continued. My mom called me and sat me down. She told me, I need to tell you the reason you, you, you cannot get, you cannot, you're, you're not married up to now is because your dad gave you out to your uncle that died. Hence, you can never get married. She made me promise not to tell my dad about it. So I remembered that the fat man who was seated on my sofa I was so happy. I told my mom, I forgive my dad and now know how I should pray, uh, I should pray for me to get married. Apostle, in reality, I don't know how, is, how I should pray about this. I'm the firstborn in my family. All my siblings are married. But as for me, the last relationship I was in was 
in 2013, I was just left and the guy married another lady to date. I have never had any man approach me, kindly help me on how I ought to pray strategically. Shalom. By the way, we're going to be having our night prayer meeting that will be coming to your house from uh, 10 uh, p.m. up to half past midnight. So please don't miss out to low, don't, don't miss out on that. It's going to be very powerful. Last week it was amazing, amazingly powerful. And the Lord is going to take us to another glory. Now, this is what this dream means. One, you had come from prayer. Now, when you came from prayer, you were on a higher spiritual platform. That's why God opened your eyes to see this in this dream. You saw a fat man, you know? A fat man would speak about a powerful demonic force that is huge. I mean, just like the way you know that you cannot easily carry a fat man that tells you that that spirit, uh, you need a higher authority to help you. Now, listen, the fat man was seated in your sofa set. What does sitting mean? Sitting speaks about a, a position of comfort, which means it speaks about a position of settling, which means that this demonic entity has settled in your life. It is so comfortable you have never generated enough spiritual firepower to cause it, even if not to go, but to cause it to be restless. <laughs> it is seated in a sofa, having a good time. It is settled in your life. You know? That's why certain demonic forces, you don't have enough firepower. You need... Uh, you need, to, you need people to pray with you, people that are operating in a higher authority by the grace of God. Now, what does your, your, your... So, your mom told you that you could not get married because your dad gave you over to your uncle, and this uncle of yours is dead. Uh, this uh, dead uncle uh, represents the dead. It represents the dead. What uh, it shows here, I would really want to know from you, and if you're there, I want you to write to me. Uh, it could be that you have been having visitations of the spirit of Sakabas, uh, you know, that spirit that likes to sleep with ladies because the, your dead uncle, it does not uh, actually, it's not so much about your uncle, but he's dead. So you, the dead uncle represents that world. It represents that spiritual space. So that, that there is a spirit that has a covenant with you. And that spirit is a powerful spirit. And that's the spirit that is fighting. Now concerning your father having given you over to, to your uncle, it could mean that your dad did get involved in certain spiritual transactions that opened up space in your family for certain forces of darkness to come in. It does not specifically mean that your father dedicated you there, but certain transactions that he was involved in. Uh, so, I want to pray with you right now, and we want to break that fat man. We rebuke that spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, we stand on a higher ground. We break your power. And we command you, loose! Come out of that sister in the name of Jesus Christ. We overthrow and we overturn that seat. That, that seat represents a throne. It is a throne. So we overturn that throne. We remove away that throne. That demonic spirit, your spirit of Sakabas, we rebuke you and we remove that demonic throne. We crush it looser in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Now, 2013 up to now is seven years. So I want to declare the seven years have come to an end. The seven years have come to an end. You've gone through 
seven years of a famine in terms of relationship. Now you're going to enter into uh, another spiritual space. You know, you remember Egypt had seven years of harvest and seven years of a famine. But for you, you have experienced the seven years of a famine uh, uh, that is broken from your life in Jesus' mighty name. Let's, let's look at another one. Mm. Okay, this one says, uh, Dear Pastor, my niece, Susan, dreamed that her husband, Daniel, died in a lorry accident and she was crying over his coffin. She woke up crying with fear and trembling. Now, you see, there are three dimensions that you can see in a dream concerning death, and they all have different interpretations. If you dream that somebody is dead, it can mean that um, that person is, yeah, it's true, it is physical death, but it can also mean it is um, a particular chapter in that person's life is coming to an end. And so there is a new chapter that is coming. It can also mean that the carnal nature has died. You know? <laughs> Some years back, uh, a friend of mine, I mean, we used to preach with him. Uh, somebody, somebody in our church dreamt uh, that I had died. I was preaching and, uh, you know, so, uh, and she was so restless over it. And she came to tell me, but according to the, because you have to look at the atmosphere of the dream. But death signifies, it doesn't mean physical death. But if you dream that somebody is in a coffin, now that one does not speak about physical death. I mean, about uh, death, uh, a chapter coming to an end. No, 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 no. That one is now specifically speaking about the death of somebody. It can mean that the years of that person's life are coming to an end and they are being short, you know, the, the devil is, is shortcutting the years that the, the Lord gave to that person and the plans are in an advanced stage. So that one we have to pray and break that in Jesus' name. And we're going to do that. And uh, because we are online and we have intercessors here, we have enough authority to crush that. But if you dream a grave, that's again another dimension. A grave is the third dimension. That is a, that is a dimension that needs a higher spiritual authority to deal with it. Because it means that uh, when the devil planned the death, you didn't see it. Your eyes were kind of blinded. You didn't see the, pro the, the, the process of the coffin, but now you can only see the grave. And the grave, when a grave, when somebody's buried, what does that mean? It is sealed. So it speaks about a seal in the realm of the spirit, a sealed secret. You know? Uh, because when people are buried, it is, I mean, rarely is somebody buried and they <laughs> remove them out of the grave. So if you ever dream a dimension where somebody is in the grave, that is a higher dimension, it needs a higher level of spiritual authority and fire power to completely destroy it. Father Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, we take authority over the powers of darkness, the spirit of death, that demonic coffin, we crush it, we destroy that coffin, we break your power, we uproot you in the name of Jesus. We declare that uh, the husband of Susan shall not die in the mighty name of Jesus. He shall live. 
Rosa Magadaya. We declare life. We declare a long life. Makasa Magadosa. Rema, we close the door of death. And spirit of death, we send you back to the gates of hell. We send you back. You will not bring sickness in the mighty name of Jesus. Okay. This one says, In my dream, I saw the word revival written very clearly, but within seconds, the letters in this, in this word crumple and become like a dough in or a heap. I wondered why it has crumpled and uh, was a bit sad over this incident and I woke up. What it means, uh, that first segment means what? You love revival. You love revival so much. You're talking about revival. But there is a dimension that the revival has not entered your heart. Especially your spirit. You're talking about it. That's why it appeared and immediately disappeared. It, the, 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 the burden, you've not been consumed by that burden of reviving the heart. You know, times we can talk about revival, revival, Lord, we want revival, but it is coming from the mind. And what happens? The things of the mind easily disappear. But what is in the heart does not easily, cannot easily, easily uh, uh, it, it disappear. Then it says, as I continue to sleep, I dreamt again. I dreamt I shared with people about revival and I saw very clearly in the dream a man standing with the arms folded and eyes looking at me, but he was very indifferent to my sharing, not interested in revival. Then I woke up. The hands being folded here speaks about a, uh, a resignation. Now, a man represents the priesthood, you know, uh, which means that the priesthood around the territory where you are is, uh, I, I mean, though they may be talking about revival, but that burden, that seriousness, that conviction uh, is not yet so much in them, you know, uh, about revival. So this is not for you to condemn them, but for you to pray for them. That's what the Lord is calling, uh, calling you about. Later, I fell asleep again and dreamt once more that I was a desperate move to tell or encourage people about revival, and I could see that not everyone was excited about revival. It saddened me that not everyone was excited about revival despite teachings have been done concerning revival. The teachings touched people's minds, but not their heart. But I was comforted when someone told me that some are really laboring for revival to break out. As I felt the comfort, I awoke and heard my alarm clock ringing. It was time to get up. What it means, the Lord is calling you to be, not to be part of the people that are talking about revival, but to labor in prayer about revival. Because when you are telling them about revival, they could not get it. It is not going, the revival is not going to come by the preaching. It is going to come by the laboring in prayer. And this is why the Lord gave you this message about those people that have been laboring in prayer, in prayer for revival. And then, I think there's one here that I'm, I'm gonna finish with. And what is that? It's gone off? Okay. Um. This one says, recurring dreams with a pattern until two years ago. I always dreamed of going for the Malaysian Certificate of Education, which is equivalent to all level examination. In dreams, I panicked because I realized I've not been preparing for the exams. In this dream, sometimes I realized I have not been attending classes for some of the subjects. Then I woke up. Recur two recurring dreams for the past two years. Similar scenario, but in the dreams I say to myself, I've already passed my A level. I even had obtained university degrees. I don't need to sit for O level anymore. Then I woke up in peace. The latest dream in the similar scenario. I dreamt that I was registering for an undergraduate course in my old university where I obtained my first degree. 
at the resignation desk, I said, registration desk, I said to myself, I've already obtained my first degree. Why do I need to register for another undergraduate course? At the registration desk, there was a lady who looks like she is in her 60s. She called out to me and said, are you so-and-so? Do you remember me? I was a young tutor when you were here studying for your undergraduate course. We are so glad to see your name on our registry. I honestly could not remember her, but she was obviously happy to see, to see me. And I said to her, since I already have a first degree, do I need to register for another undergraduate course? The lady said to me, of course not. We are privileged to register you on a master program. Please come with me to the graduate school building. Then she took me through a special door with a key card into graduate school building. Then I woke up. These dreams are the same messages the Lord has been repeating over to you because he's trying to pass over uh, a message that is going to determine your transition to the next uh, level. Okay? We see in the first dream, you're dreaming about your all levels, which you already done, and you panicked because you realize you have not been preparing for the exams. Now, that, that, those are past. There are messages, I think about five or six messages in this that I will summarize, but maybe I'll send you an SMS, you know. One is uh, you need to come against the, the spirit of retrogression. You need to break retrogression. Secondly, what does your all level remind you of? You know? Thirdly, there is a major transitional stage that has remained elusive in your life. Because you see, exams usually are gates, they are major gates of transition to the next uh, dimension. Now, the, the, the reason why the Lord is bringing it back and back and back and back, I just want you to uh, reflect back on your life in all level, A level, and uh, at university. There is a certain character, a certain character that helped you to pass all level, to pass A level, to do your first degree. Uh, or even your second degree, there's something that is very, very important for you to use now to transition to the next uh, dimension. Because the Lord wants to transition you. That's why you're seeing exams. Okay, he's using the past, but he's passing a message to you. What is it that you did that helped you to pass those exams? The Lord wants you to draw from there because God wants to transition you to the next stage of your life. But that transition has been elusive because there's something that you've not been doing. Okay? Uh, then the other thing, so prepare the way you prepared for O level, the way you prepared for A level, the way you prepared when you're do doing your first degree. That is very, very important. Because look at the way the Lord is using. He's using the three, almost the three stages of your transition, all level, A level, and your undergraduate. But then, the other message here is this. I'm not so sure, uh, but if it is like that, this would be the message. If you have a second degree, because remember, you went to this woman for registration, and uh, again, you are being given another, another, you're being taken in again for undergraduate. And yet you already passed that level. So, in case you've done your second degree, 
It tells you that your second degree has not yet been recognized in the realm of the spirit. It has not yet, it has not brought fruit in your life. You know, the spiritual realm is acknowledging you as somebody that is still on the undergraduate, not your master's degree, if you have it. And so that is why, again, you are just being taken in. So the level and the fruit that you have, if you have a second degree, you have not yet gotten fruit and benefit from that second degree. And we want to pray and just break that in the mighty name of Jesus. Because if you labored, you passed that level, you should enjoy the fruit of your labor. You know, there is uh, uh, what I can call a veil of darkness that could be covering, you know, uh, you, uh, your papers, what you studied, not to properly get the benefit. So, Father, we pray for your son in the mighty name of Jesus uh, Christ, the son of the living God. We come against retrogression, the spirit of retrogression that wants to draw him back. We break retrogression in the name of Jesus. Mashana Makata Rabazandai. We break retrogression in Jesus' mighty name. Makatsa Kabra Kandoza Magadaya. Roshana Bagadoza Bagadoza. We release him to go forward in the mighty name of Jesus. You're going forward. 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 And you see, the dream ends with something very interesting. You argued with a woman and you say, come on, I did my undergraduate. So, that speaks about discernment. You know, the Lord has activated a strong discernment in your life and the power to be firm. And then you went with the lady and she used the card and opened the door. And you all entered that door. There are doors in this season that the Lord is opening up for you. So, Father, we just declare those doors in the mighty name of Jesus. Doors to be opened. New doors. New opportunities. New connections to the glory and honor of your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. People of God, God bless you so much. Let us meet during the overnight, our prayer meeting at night. We shall deal with the next dreams next week. Have a wonderful weekend in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Worship team, please give us some song there. Wewe ni mungu Mpasu wa bari Haufana nishu Na kitu kingine how far na kitu kine Wewe ni mungu Tuliza mawimbi How far na kitu kingine How far Na kitu kingine Wewe ni mungu Wewe ni mungu Mpasu wa bari Haofana nishwi Haofana nishwi Na kitu kingine Haofana nishwi Haofana nishwi Na kitu kingine Wewe ni mungu to lose a bana, how fun a mission, hallelujah, how fun a mission, how Tuliza bahari bana Tuliza bahari Haufana nishu Hallelujah 
I'll find a mystery. I'll find a mystery. That leads to me. Where when he moves, girl. Where when he moves. To lease on my wing. To lease on my wing. I'll find a mystery. I'll find a mystery. Hallelujah. That leads to me. I'll find a mystery. Una fanya fanya mambo mayo wanadamu awe una toa una toa faraja mayo wanadamu awe una fanya fanya mambo mayo wanadamu awe una toa 